Well, hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 230 of our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. This month, we're focusing on communication goals, and today's topic is connection and communication goals. How does feeling more connected, more relatable, and to relate better to other people or other situations or circumstances impact and improve our communication? So I'm going to share quickly, briefly, just 15 different strategies that you can use to achieve effective communication, connection, and improve your communication skills and goals and objectives. Number one, and we've talked about a lot of these before, and we will continue to as we go throughout the whole month about communication because repetition breeds familiarity. Familiarity breeds actual action taken, and these skills and abilities developed or tried to. Our action item today is going to be to simply pick one of these 15 areas and pay conscious attention to it today and then share one thing that you notice or observe about or a lesson that you have that you learned today about one of these different abilities and strategies you can use to connect with other people and different skills in different situations to improve your communication and to get what you want with respect to your communication and your relationships. A lot of times we just want to be heard and understood. So what are some ways we can go about being understood and more heard. Uh, number one, active listening. How many times have we talked about this already? A lot because active listening is two-way listening, right? It's not just uh, waiting to respond to somebody's communication to you. It is actually trying to find out and get more information about the situation through nonverbal cues and things like that. Not just you know, somebody says something, then you quick want to throw in your two cents worth. It's kind of like that one-upmanship when you're telling stories and fish stories. Uh, number two, tailor your message to your audience. I speak very differently to my granddaughters than I speak to my daughter and son, than I speak to my uh, parents, my sisters, etc. the people at work, my clients and customers. We speak to different people differently depending on the audience, right? Uh, so we want to tailor our message to how they will best hear and understand the intent of what we're trying to communicate. That's one of the ways that we connect. Uh, select the right channel, meaning am I face to face having a conversation? Am I texting? Am I uh, calling on the phone? Am I having a video conference? Am I having a an audio conference, just a video call or a voice call? Uh, am I putting things on social media and interacting on social media? Am I having face-to-face one-on-one meetings. What is the right channel for the message that you want to deliver? Uh, I'll never forget, and this is you know a long time ago, but my son's girlfriend broke up with him over text. I don't consider that the right channel ever to, you know, that was like his first girlfriend or something. I, I don't think that there's certain messages that should be delivered via text. It just seems inappropriate. You know, if you don't want to see anybody more, at least have the the wherewithal and the gumption to, to tell them to their face. That, to me, is an example of that. Uh, if you're not going to do business with somebody anymore, maybe it's maybe if it's a difficult, challenging relationship, you, you send a formal letter or a contract or something that says you're terminating their business. But usually, it deserves a phone call, right? Even if that phone call is uncomfortable. Uh, so choose the right channel to deliver your message. Make sure you're considering your audience and then that you're listening and understanding and and in a two-way conversation, if that's appropriate. Number four, embrace nonverbal communication. We show so much in our communication through our nonverbals, and our nonverbals are hand gestures, facial expressions, posture, energy, tone, tonality, volume, pitch, all kinds of things. And it's worth looking into if it's something that you haven't studied before, which I really haven't. Number five, uh, this is more for an online thing but you can use it in, in all your communication. Make sure that the words you're choosing, and this one in particular is the SEO, I can't remember what they're called, LSWs or something, I don't even know what that stands for. Uh, LSIs uh, are intended and selected to improve your SEO, search engine optimization, so people can find you. <laughs> but this applies to everything. Remember to pick and choose the words you use wisely because they might mean something different to other people, including online search engines. Uh, number six, leverage storytelling. Stories are a terrific way to communicate 
and share information and let people draw their own conclusions versus you just directly saying something sometimes. So become a great storyteller. Uh, show empathy. Remember to walk in the other person's shoes when you're communicating, right? If you are delivering a message that might not be greatly received or even that will be greatly received, are you considering the impact it's going to have on the person you're delivering the message to or talking to or speaking with or communicating with? Number eight. I love this one. Seek feedback for continuous improvement. I am a lifelong learner and believer in continuous improvement. And the only way we really know the impact we're having on people with our communication and with our communication skills, with our language, with, with all of our nonverbals is to seek feedback, to ask them, well, what did you hear me say? Or how do you feel about that? And then find out and listen actively to what they actually say, not what you want to hear or what you think that you want them to say. Uh, number 10, oh, nine, resolve conflict constructively. Number nine, resolve conflicts constructively. I cannot think of a single relationship I've ever been involved in that didn't have some kind of a conflict. Conflict does not have to be bad. It just means we don't agree about this one aspect of this one thing. But that doesn't mean that we can't be friends and we don't get along because guess what? All of our experiences are different. What's in our head and in our mind and in our past and in our present is different for each and every one of us. So why on earth would we ever think we should absolutely positively agree with another human being on absolutely everything? That's just kind of immature and silly behavior in my opinion. So we want to resolve conflicts that are bound to come up constructively and in a positive way so that everybody wins in the in the equation not so that we win and other people lose number 10 finally balance verbal and nonverbal elements some of us lean more toward nonverbal communication others toward verbal communication we want to make sure that and I would say balance <clears throat> in, in terms of what's appropriate for the situation there are situations when we need to really curtail our body language and our emotions and and pull those emotional reactions out of the situation you know if you're at a funeral and and again it's all situation based if you probably don't want to be cracking jokes and being loud and obnoxious at a funeral or or in a business meeting or at an event etc it depends so tailor your communication your communication style to the audience and the situation 11 incorporate visual aids visual aids i love pictures and visual aids and props and things i'm surrounded by props so that whenever i think of something that's appropriate for the discussion i can pull them up and use them uh 12 be authentic give or authenticity is the glue to connection authenticity is the basis of everything if you're not being yourself number one you know it but guess what everybody else you're interacting with knows it as well so be authentic be you I, I love one of my favorite sayings for decades now has been be yourself be you uh, be loving love being be you that's kind of my tagline it's been for since my sudden cardiac arrest uh, number 13 overcoming language barriers if appropriate but this also applies to the words we choose the vocabulary we use the <clears throat> I talk a lot about idioms in my supersize your business uh, group because it reminds me every single day that what I think something means doesn't necessarily mean what other people thinks it, it means and sometimes I get the meaning wrong or I have a misunderstanding of what something means when I look it up and research it so overcoming language barriers isn't just that you speak Spanish and I speak English or you speak you know German and I speak English or you speak whatever and I speak or I speak English and you speak German however you look at it, it doesn't necessarily have to be different actual dialects and languages it can just be dialects or regional uh, colloquialisms or idioms or things that we use without even thinking about what they mean and assuming that they mean the same thing to other people uh, 14 <clears throat> manage your virtual communication nowadays with technology and especially since the COVID pandemic in 2020 we are much more dependent on virtual means of communicating so zoom calls online video facebook lives uh social media in any way shape or form texting our cell phones etc 
we are so dependent on these devices, these virtual devices and virtual communication. But we have to keep in mind, number one, behave the same way virtually and through email and through digital communication as you would in person. I think one of the best rules of thumb is treat people the way you want to be treated. And that means with respect to our communication, especially verbal, non-face-to-face -face communication, because who we are shows through all the time, whether we know it or are consciously aware of it or not. And we want to make sure that what we're presenting and who we're showing up as is who we really are, not uh, a meaner version of ourselves or a nicer version of ourselves or a fake version of ourselves. And finally, cultivate patience. Communication, like any other skill, is something we learn and can choose to improve or not. Some people don't care how they come across. And that, in and of itself, tells us a lot about them. If they don't care about how they're communicating and the effect it's having on other people, guess what? People aren't going to care about them because people don't want to be treated in a way that makes them feel negative, badly, belittled, etc. So, today, what are we going to do? We're going to think about these 15 things. We're going to pick one area and just pay attention to it as we go about our day and then share a, a lesson learned or an aha that we have about that particular thing. Any questions about this, hit me up. There's, of course, a write-up in Guide 17, and, and yesterday's is in there as well. Uh, the chat GPT got updated whenever that happens. So one thing about technology, whenever something changes, we have to be flexible and flow and figure it out and change with it. But any questions, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another communication goal-related topic to help us get what we want by doing little things every day. All right. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome day.